Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Absolutely. 10 4. 10 4. <laughs> what are some, actually, before we get into the details, what are some of the codes that you guys use? Uh, people may not know your background, but when you, when, what are you like 211, 41, what, what are some of the codes that you've used in your past? Your what, past for, uh, for what? <laughs> you know, when you call the dispatcher, I, I, when you call a dispatcher, they'll say what some some of the codes, code uh, numbers. Well, it's you know, there's a there's a whole mess, and you know, there's a whole list of codes. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, signal eight is a suspicious person. Uh huh. Uh, twenty two is a, is a is a automobile accident. I mean, there's like a hundred yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, give me two more. Give me two more. <laughs> two more. Uh, signal three is for a supervisor. Uh, God. How about, how about code red? What's the worst thing? If, like a super emergency. Uh. Super well, it, it it really is not. We really didn't have a code red. Um, you had to, uh, you know, whatever the emergency was, there was right. a thing for it. You know, right. like a code for it. Well, I I have, I have fifty five more minutes to drill you, so I guess wanted to kind of tease people that, <laughs> given your several decades, uh, it was almost thirty years, right? Forty. Almost forty. Almost four decades. Oh, it was forty. Forty one. So 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 more than more than four decades on the New Haven, um, police service. And also, what ten years with the? Uh, oh with no, let's, let's divide it up. Okay, twenty-one years. Twenty-one years with New Haven. Okay, twenty years with Southern. Okay, it's good. Like, good. She's good. working New Haven. <laughs> good, good, yeah. good. And 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 really, you're right. It those are sometimes even artificial demarcations because a murder on Southern's campus is a murder in New Haven. New so. Haven, or or <laughs> you know, a death on Southern's campus is a death in New Haven. So so and people people we get we get caught up in our. 30 wards in our various neighborhoods and our various eth ethnicities and our various titles, but really it's one planet. As you may have guessed, everybody, I'm chatting with uh, uh, Rick Randall. You, you retired as a, for, for, from New Haven Police Service, was, you were a lieutenant? Captain. A, a captain. And uh, I'm not going to ask you your, your title at Southern, but I, but you're Ch Chief Cook and Bottle Washer at, 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 at Southern. <laughs> I retired in Southern as a lieutenant. As a lieutenant as well. Uh, and it's really great for us to spend these next 40 or, 40 or so minutes and glad you could make yourself self-available. Uh, as, as some know, this, uh, this month, July, is my second anniversary as an alder in, in one of the wards here in New Haven. We have 30 wards in New Haven, and Rick, <coughs> and, I li Rick and I live in Ward 28. And he was kind enough to kind of come on the show today. Uh, and we've chatted, just, just, just dawns on me, Rick, as I look at you, that we've been We've had several chats on the on the porch on, on my stoop about public <laughs> about public service before I even uh, had any had any. I'll, I'll I'll use the term fantasy, but whether I before I even had any fantasy of being officially involved with uh, with, with public affairs and public safety from an alder standpoint. But you know, Rick, it seems to me that we've talked in the past about you were when you had your Edge Edgewood Library situation and. Also, uh, I think it was you and Bridget Russell had an event at the Community Community Outreach Center. Um, mm -hmm. I know we've talked about predators in the past and the family business, family business and generational pass throughs in that regard. Uh, I'll say narcotics, Billy. I'll, I'll just phrase it that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, Southern Southern students, of course. Um, even training, police police training over over the years and the and what that means moving forward. Um, well, that's probably you know, the the biggest thing going on in 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 the in, the, in our in the police industry now is training because yeah. there's no there's no national training. I mean, there is no national standard for police training. Um, if you look at it, um, you know, in the old days, you had the New York, Boston, which was the East Coast, and the L.A., which was the West Coast, and then you had all the middle, um, which was willy nilly. Mm -hmm. um, the type of training that they got because there's really no no standard. I mean, they try to you know quote professionalize it, but if you look at the middle of the country, other than some of the big cities, there is really no true standard that everybody has to abide by, which is very interesting because um, what may happen on the East Coast or what may happen uh, in the cities on the East Coast may not be the exactly the same way that policing will be done in the South or policing done in the Midwest, and Indeed. it's just different types. So. Indeed, indeed, and I'm going to even drill down a little bit more about uh, even though we, you and I might not be king of the world, 
thus thus far and and, and our wives certainly challenge that that, <laughs> that, that belief Period. system but but certainly in new haven i'm <clears throat> going to kind of ask you about what, what, what we can be doing more from a training standpoint i serve on the public safety uh committee and the chair is is, is our companion well, alder uh um, Brian Wingate. Uh, also, I'm going to ask you about speed bumps and Kia boys, et cetera. But um, how do you want to begin in terms of the context of? Uh, I, would, wanna, mm -hmm, go I, ahead. I would. I would probably want to, you know, draw down on on training. Okay. Because that is the well, two things: training and how do we how do we retain officers? Good. Good police uh, contract, et cetera. Uh, right. Well, police contract, but also, you know, a, a sort of a broader look at at how to how to how to uh, retain officers. Yes. Because I think we're, we're missing um, a big thing um, as far as contrast concerned, or, you know, of looking at the contract or what we what the city offers um, to their employees, not just police officers, but to their employees. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest thing to, as far as I'm concerned is medical. And one of the ways I, you know, fantasize that, that this can be corrected is that all the big cities in, in, in Connecticut and even some of the smaller ones get together and do their medical as one unit because mm. they get a better package. But mm -hmm. and once they get that out of the way, then um, you know the police departments can or the cities can then look at their at their unions and say, okay, the medical's out of the way. This is what we're going to get. This is what we yeah. have. This is probably the best package that you'll ever get. So let's not you know let's not talk about that because it's going to be a lot better than what you have now. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk you know, nuts and bolts about what, you know, what to do in training, what to do in, 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 in police work, um, you know, what the unions, what the unions need, um, which would be pensions, 401ks, because 401ks, cops can go anywhere, mm -hmm. you know, your 401k and say, I'm going, I'm going to Bridgeport, I'm going to Guilford, I'm going to wherever. So there's, it changes sort of the dynamic once you get those two things out of the way. Indeed. Um, and, and so, focus. So, so let, let's uh, segue into also the actual relate from a consumer standpoint, from a, from a citizen standpoint, from a resident standpoint. You know, training is kind of an am ambiguous term. Uh, we can go down into the weeds. What kind of training you think we, we you'd like to see? If you if you were king of training uh, down on the boulevard right now as we speak, <laughs> what would you like to be see happening? Well, the, well, the, the the thing with training, and one of the things that I have sort of been wrestling with. Um, for forever in, in my in my career was this so-called warrior mentality hmm. um, that, that I don't know where where you know where cops get it from I don't know why they have it um, I am a true believer that you don't need a warrior mentality and the reason why is that if you have a warrior mentality you have to have an enemy hmm. if you're a police officer who's your enemy hmm. the enemy would en end up being the public you know whoever you run into the public they're the enemy and you can't have that. If you have a guardian mentality, which is the one I, I, I sort of um, like to adopt, mm -hmm. is that you guard people against themselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guard them from the outside world, but you also guard them against themselves. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, a sheepdog when, the, when, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a when a lamb or something um, sort of wanders off, you know, he sort of corrals it and brings it back, brings it mm -hmm. back to the fold. And the guardian mentality would we'll probably stop um, if we trained in in, in, in that regard. Hmm. A lot of these types of, oh, well, I, I, I didn't, I shot him because um, I didn't take time to look because. Um, I, what comes to mind is that Florida incident where the you had the uh, the you know worker on the ground with 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 a patient and you know who's playing with a truck and say they shot they they shot him thinking they were going to shoot you know bad shot that he was going to shoot the person with the truck. Why they weren't listening to them? They didn't focus on what was going on. Um, they had this warrior mentality: something's going to happen. I have to. I, I have to shoot. I have to mm. decide. And that that's you know part of the problem. That's why you have a lot of these shootings. And when you look back and say, why did they shoot? It's the mindset that they went in with. Mm -hmm. They weren't mm -hmm. guarding this person either against themselves or whatever. It's the mindset they went in with. Um, what and, kind of battles did you have to, either at Southern or, or the city? Because certainly I'm, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you initially joined the force knowing this, that, that you saw yourself to be a guardian and believed in community policing. What kind of battles oh, did you encounter oh, with oh, folks? At, battles? At, at, well, you know, some things were I could have shot and didn't. I, you know, me and an officer, Officer Veloza, were, you know, we're on a routine call of somebody disturbing the peace and we were walking up the stairwell and, uh, you know, we 
found the person, we talked to him, something was a little off, but, you know, told him, look, if you're not, if you're not knocking on people's fences with the, with the stick or whatever, if you are stop. And if you're not, then don't worry about it. As we're walking down the stairwell, we hear a click. Mm. As he turned around, he had a shotgun, mm. loaded, a loaded shotgun, and he actually fired it. Mm. And, you know, you know, basically, you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, he had to drop on us. Again, I'm looking at it. He says, something was wrong with him when we talked to him. It's like, what are you shooting at? Mm. And he said, I'm shooting at spirits. He's shooting mm. at spirits. But we're not the spirits. But mm. he's seeing things and he's shooting at spirits. And I mean, you know, my, you know, Veloza was behind me, Officer Veloza was behind me. And I said, well, you can't kill him with, 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 with your man-made thing. Um, <laughs> you, you, need, you need something from nature. <laughs> and, and I traded my nightstick for that shotgun. Mm. Well, could mm. I have shot him? Mm. Technically, yes. Mm -hmm. Technically, that was a, that would have been a, I would have been a good shoot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it didn't go off. What do we have here? I mean, we have a Mexican standoff. Yes, yes. Is he mad at us? We No, we left him actually in good, in, you know, in, in, in good spirits, you know. What is he shooting at? Yes. Why did yes. I come to that conclusion? I don't know. I mean, that, you know, it was, you know, it was, you know, off the hand, my, you know, Dave's tapping me. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm trading this nightstick for this. Just be quiet. He gave mm. me a shot, and I gave him a nightstick. We wrapped him up, called the ambulance, wrapped him up with a nightstick. And I, the ambulance drivers, we can't, I said, wrap him up with a nightstick, take him to the yes. hospital. Mental health training is another thing that we, you know, that mm -hmm. needs to be concentrated on because we don't recognize as an industry, we don't recognize people in mental crisis very mm. well. Mm. We recognize them most of the time as a threat. We mm -hmm. don't recognize them as, as, you know, very well as this may be a mental crisis. Um, there are agencies now that are teaching that to, to police officers. Um, I know New Haven is taking, you know, taking part in it um, so that they can better recognize people in, in mental crisis. It helps a lot mm. uh, when you can recognize if, if somebody's talking to themselves, if they, you know, are they hearing voices, what is going, what is going on? So you can better, you know, you can better, you know, sort of quote, guard them against themselves, guard right. them against, you know, guard them, you know, guard them. Um, again, mm -hmm. if you see them as an enemy, you don't need to guard them anymore. Mm -hmm. and that, again, that's my major problem uh, with police work today is that a lot of officers um, just, you know, you have to have that warrior mentality. And I'm like, no, you don't have to, you don't need a warrior mentality. You need a guardian mentality. Mm. That's really helpful. Walk me down memory lane, if, if you would indulge me a little bit. Uh, let's go to the Edgewood, the library there at the, at the Edgewood substation. What's, what was that all about? <laughs> um, well, yeah, this well that you know that was New Haven's foray into in community policing. So they built all these substations, and what I did, you know, I took them at their word that you want community policing. So I, you know, went to St. Rayfield's and asked them if they, you know, want to help with this community policing project and our substation. And they said, well, yeah. So they said they offered some of their staff to staff the uh, library. And to, you know, so, we, and then we got, went to the schools and said, look, we're going to have an after school library. So after, you know, Troop, um, Dwight, those, those kids can come right, right to us and we'll, you know, we can have an after school program. And actually it was good for parents because parents can, can then, you know, if they're working, whatever, have a place to pick up their kids. Um, they have a safe place where the kids were, were, can go. And then um, it was also at the height of KSI. And so I had the officers say, look, from this hour to this hour, the kids are coming home from school. You're going to be on these corners, making sure that these kids can get safely um, from one point, point A to point B. But take take a deep breath just on that point, because although you and I are, are young in spirits, we we've been around the track a few times. So when you say KSI, that might not. For I'm people sorry. That, people it was that are a, listening, they might have no idea what that means. KSI was a a was a a gang that we would sold drugs in the Kensington neighborhood, um, where my uh, substation was right in the middle of. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, the substation was built. Um, they threatened to blow it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, I had the officers shut down any kind of commerce that they had going until they, they yelled, uncle, we didn't mean it, we didn't mean it, we didn't mean it. Um, but that, that's KSI. It was, you know, it's Kenson Street, you know, gang uh, on, in that area. And, and it's fair to say, and again, someone that might be listening to the show who is either a former member or an alumni of KSI or have or a family member and 
so I don't hesitate to say this, but they were rather uh, well known. Uh, you, you tell me that they were how they well were, known and, they how were, okay. and how threatening were they? Right. They were they were well known. Um, they you know each there were several at that time several gangs in the area in New Haven. Um, each of them had their ter- sort of their territory mark- marked out. Uh, and uh, my, my substation just happened to be in, in that one, but there were several, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know. You had, how, did, how did that fit into your, your community policing philosophy? Okay, well, the, the, police, the community policing, there's, you know, there's two things. There's the, the law enforcement part uh, where we had to do, which we worked with the federal government to, okay, once we got, we got them in court, that they, would, that, that they would take these cases over and then put them away on federal time. Mm-hmm. So it's not just, you know, uh, police officers being social workers. There, you know, there, you know, there's a law enforcement aspect of this, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, we're willing to, you know, you know, use it. Yeah. Uh, and then that that that's the thing. It's that everybody thinks that when we talk about community policing, that they're talking about, oh, you know, they're social workers and so on and so forth. That is not the case. That's far from the case. Um, it is also getting the community involved. I mean, we had mm-hmm. we had. Uh, uh, officers carrying at that time, they didn't have cell phones, they were carrying beepers. And when somebody saw something, they would beep the officer and say, I see such and such, 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 and you know, yes, the officer would then go out and, and, and investigate it. It could be either the officer, the beat officer, or beep me, and I would send officers out to investigate it. Um, excellent, excellent. So excellent. It was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a two pronged approach. You have the federal government, hopefully once we, once we are started arresting people, you know, to take, you know, to take the ball and put them away for forever. And then uh, we had the community um, involvement and they would come to, uh, you know, come to the community meetings at the substation and talk about what, you know, what their concerns were and how their concerns were addressed. That was, you know, the core of it. Mm-hmm. And I was actually very lucky because I had the opportunity to talk to, you know, on several occasions, uh, George Kelling, who wrote the, you know, who wrote the book, you know, was a co-author of Broken Windows. Mm-hmm. So I got to understand exactly, you know, sort of what he, you know, what he meant by it versus what people were sort of taking and saying, well, it's, it's, they mean being social workers and how a lot of departments um, were sort of incorporating it. Um, his ultimate dream was to have um, the actual city government um, more involved in what he called community, what he called community governing, which was a combination mm-hmm. of using mm-hmm. community policing. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that term. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, LCI, uh, livable cities, was was sort of an out an, an outgrowth. Good, good to know. Of, good, good of, of, of that of that of that mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as you know, as cities work, when the money runs dry, the federal government stops funding things, then those things sort of go by the wayside. I don't know. I know LCI is still around, but oh, a yes, lot very of, much so, yes. But a lot of the programs, a lot of the things um, that were started, you know, sort of ended. Once there's no money, you know, the city's not going to put their money um, to it. And that's where community government comes in and, and also a community participation where um, we have to be less narcissistic about mm-hmm. our taxes. Yeah, you know, we have to say, look, we're looking for a better community. We are part of this community. Uh, we may have to spend a little bit more for that. Uh, Indeed. So. Let, let's stay, if we can, on the this retrospective re- reflection. And I hope you've had your coffee this morning or your ginkgo or whatever it has helped. Oh, my you. Diet Coke is right here. <laughs> your, your, your Diet Coke's so good to keep, keep you going. But it seems to me, just as you were chatting again, that what flashed into my mind was, and I want you to, if you're willing to elaborate, you and uh, Bridget Cogswell, I believe it was an event that you had at the Community we've Outreach had sev- Center. Yeah, we had, we used, we did several events. Uh, that was one of them. Um, okay. That again was one of those, you know, you know, looking at the community, you know, going police department, social worker going to the community and saying, look, you know, what's going on? What do you need? How can we address these things? Um, and again, taking an approach. I don't have, the police department doesn't have all the answers. Social workers or the, or the social doesn't have all the answers, but together we can come up with a way to address some of these problems. Um, take uh, the projects up uh, Brookside. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
And Alder, uh, Alder Honda Smith is very much involved now in that. Now, in that take it, you know, go back, let's go back, uh, well, I, I'll have 20 years ago, let's go back 20 some odd years ago, or 30 yes. years. And we're looking, you know, we're talking to the people up in Brookside. And, you know, what is your problem? And, you know, their biggest problem was, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, after 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, buses don't come up here. Mm -hmm. How, you know, and a lot of us don't have cars and, you, and we have license, mm -hmm. you don't have a license or, or we don't have a car or a car's not registered, but we can't get the work because we can't get buses up here. How do we solve that problem? We, you know, call the connected bus company and says, look, they need to have bus services up there. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we'll have a police officer up there. As a matter of fact, they saw one of them yesterday. We'll have a police officer up there um, to make sure that, that, you know, that, 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 that they're safe for that, for that period of time, yes. the bus to one o'clock or whatever the case may be. To this day, they're running the buses up there mm -hmm. uh, so people can get, can, can get out of it because they were trapped. Yes, yes. They were trapped. They, you know, we can't work. We can't get out. We can't. They were trapped. How do we get them out of that trap? As a police officer, I, I, you know, I don't have the, I don't, I don't, I don't really have an answer for that because there's nothing that I can do as an officer per se to get them out of that. But going outside of my, you know, outside of that and saying, you know, maybe there's something a phone call that can be made that can get other people involved to get that they can get out of there. Yes, that's yes. the that's the community policing part. That's the part where you you sort of look at a problem and say, can we solve this problem? So these, you know, so that it's not no longer a problem. That problem is no longer a problem for them. Not that to say they're not going to have other problems, but we can take that problem away and say, okay, that's that's done. Let's take let's focus on something else. Indeed, you you you've had it. We have about forty or so more minutes, so we can still kind of just. But however, the spirit moves you and things that kind of cross your mind. It just it dawns on me that you've had in the last year or so, maybe the last eight or nine months, six months, perhaps a little more time to kind of reflect and, 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 and sit <laughs> down and relax. And I guess wonder when you, when you, when you, and, and again, when you've done something for 40 years, even if you don't want to think about it, even if it's been happy, your, your mind goes, goes elsewhere, but let me get to the point. How do you, is it possible to even juxtapose the community policing governing uh, city concept and layer that in terms of the, what, what people might call the, the key, the key of boys pandemic? What are your thoughts about the the, the Kia Boys uh, situation? The Kia Boys situation, which, which is the cars and the, and the thefts and the young people. It's like, it's it's well, we've <laughs> we have gone probably a little bit too far. You know, we closed. What do we do do to these do these kids when we when we catch them? What do we do? We, we turn them back out in the street. If they're under 16 or whatever it is, I think it's now, now up to 17 or 18. We turn them back out in the street. Once we do that, they're going to go back out and say, well, you know, we can do it again because they're not, you know, there's no, there's no punishment, real punishment for them. Um, so it's sort of like this, the stick and a carrot. Right now, um, there's no stick, there's no carrot, and we have a problem. We have to go back to say, okay, we have to figure out how we can sort of say we have to get these kids off the street somewhere. You know, doesn't have to, have to be the long lane, but somewhere where we can say, look, you're going to go to this camp, you're going here, you're going to this school, you're going to do this, and we're going to make sure that that you you know that you don't repeat this. In order for you to get out the carrot, you have to complete this program. Mm -hmm. We have to, we have to, we have to do that. Right now, we're willy nilly. We don't have it. We we don't want to put them away. But, and there we, we turn back out in the street. And the problem just keeps going on and on and on and on. Mm. Mm. Uh, so again, that's one of those problems that you look at and says, how come it wasn't a problem maybe 20 years ago? Why is it a problem now? What were we doing then that may put a stop to it or, you know, you know sort of hindered it a little bit, but also was maybe bad all, you know, in, in some other aspect, how can we improve that? What we did before, improve it in such a way that we can make sure that we hinder the progress of kids coming back out and just committing the same crimes over and over and over again. Um, you know, the other night we, you know, kids going through cars. We caught one. Um, mm -hmm. My daughter parked a car here while she's on vacation, and uh, somehow the the car lock got unlocked. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know we have a camera and and we, you know the kid was in you know had just gotten to the car and 
opened the door and yelled at him and he ran, you know, ran up the street. But you know, they just come up and just say, okay, we're just, go, we're just gonna do this. What do we do when we catch him? What do we do when we catch him? Hmm. And that's the sort of the policing part of it where we have to, we have to have a way to deal with him once they're caught. Mm -hmm. When, when you hear when you hear about when you hear the people wanting steep bumps, speed bumps, and other things, and you and I live on a street that's been recently paved, and it's uh, now has been somewhat similar to the Indianapolis Five Hundred from some <laughs> some some days. Uh, what is what does that say about human behavior, or or is it just or is it just? Uh, oh, wh what, why, like why, why, do you, why do you think they come up the street at at eighty miles an hour, well, or seventy miles an hour? A sh share with the audience. You 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 have speculated. Okay, if you and, look and, at okay, if you look at just our street, Bellevue Road. Okay, um, if you look up Crescent and Crescent and Boulevard, you have a light. Okay, so if I'm if I see that light turning red in the line, I'm going to turn down Bellevue and say I want to go, uh, you know, up up the Boulevard. I can go up 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 Bellevue all the way to Golf, and then maybe hit <laughs> that light rather than going up Golf. I mean, going up, going up the boulevard and hitting all the lights going, going up. Mm -hmm. So in that, in that regards, the, the turn is if I put speed bumps down, um, they're not going to want to, you know, if, you know, bump the car, bump their, you know, their, you know, the, the underneath of their car and, you know, their muffler or whatever system, but a lot of them sit low. So they don't, they don't want to do that. Um, if they're running and what I mean by running, um, if they're, you know, if they happen to be running from, say an incident, a, you know, shots fired and they're running, they're not going to want to run. They'll, they'll not going to run on a road that has speed bumps. They're going to, mm -hmm. they will take the light, maybe run, run the light, but they're not going to run the, you know, because they're afraid that something will happen to the car or something will happen to them. Um, and so they, you know, so you deter them from using those, those, those streets. Um, you're not going to get speed bumps, say on Crescent street. It's actually main drag. I mean, I've, I've heard people say, Oh, I can't, can't we speak. It is a main drag. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you have fire engines, ambulances, fire, you know, fire emergency ambulances that have to use that main drag to get from point A to point B. And that, you, you know, like you're not going to put speed bumps on Whaley Avenue, um, but right. you can do on those, on the, on those, so smaller streets in between um, where the residents, you know, will say, yeah, you know, I don't mind them because I know they're there and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll you know, I, I want people to travel you know, safely through my, through my, my neighborhood. So, um, it's, it's, it's a deterrent. Um, and that's, 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 that's how I look at it. It's a deterrent. Um, you're, you're finding them now, you know, on, uh, Huntington Avenue going down toward Whitney Avenue. They're now putting speed bumps there mm -hmm. on, 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 on high, on Highland down toward Whitney Avenue. They're putting speed bumps. So those neighborhoods that say, you know, we don't want this happening here. They're putting speed bumps. Mm. And even in neighborhoods where you think that they don't want them, uh, 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 where was I the other day? Uh, Winthrop Avenue, uh, they have speed bumps there. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's 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 a it's a it's a deterrent for them to you know people who want to use these cross streets to go elsewhere. Excellent. But let's sh shift for a second uh, a little bit to, if I can use the term, public responsibility. What is the the, the public's role. It's kind of ne not necessarily a softball question to you, but I keep on when I send out the our, our uh, incident reports, et cetera, about people just not locking their cars. But that might be just one one example of. I'm curious about why you think people don't lock their cars. But what in general, in, at the macro and or the micro level, what is the as you kind of had these chat times now to kind of you know reflect. I on go. The, I go back back to uh, Robert Peel's. Uh, uh, rules for, for policing. And he, one of, one of his rules was that policing is just a small, it's just an extent of the public, mm. and what the public should be doing. Mm -hmm. if you look at it that way. Um, police, police officers simply have the charge that every citizen should have. Mm. 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 Um, so yeah, they, do you really want the police officer to be responsible for you not locking your car? The answer to that should be no. Mm -hmm. I should I should take I should take all the precautions that I can to help mm -hmm. those people that are that you know those officers to help them do their job. So if my car is locked and somebody's checking the cars and my car is locked, but I see them walking down the street checking the cars, I can call knowing that you know all the cars are locked, but 
I can call the, you know, the police department and they can catch this guy. Um, if they don't come with their sirens blaring so he doesn't run away, they can catch this guy doing, you know, yeah, you know, I can say I can be responsible uh, citizen and say, yes, that's the person. Um, he's wearing um, a red jacket and he has a, a hoodie on. He just threw the hoodie away or just threw the mask away. And he's walking down the street. I can give them a detailed um, description of what's going on. And then the cops who are charged to do their job can do their job more mm. efficiently. Mm. Yes, that is the public's responsibility. The public does have a responsibility um, to do as much as they can to help the police officer. It's sort of like, um, you know, I have a lot of teachers in my family and they always say the parents have a responsibility to prepare their kids to go to school. Mm. Uh, the public has a responsibility to help the police department do their job. Mm. Um, mm. And that's, that's probably the best way to look at it. Mm -hmm. As a parent, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility to prepare your, your child as much as you possibly can to get into kindergarten, to read, write, know their numbers, know their know their uh their colors because you can teach that at home um you have the same responsibility that to help the police department do their job as mm -hmm. we witnesses which was the whole concept of block watches mm -hmm. back in the day when they had the you know the block watch concept mm -hmm. you know, see as much as you can give as much as you can and then have the police department do their job so it's an age old it's an age old age old way of looking at policing and and you and I are getting younger by the day, so that's 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 yeah, yeah. we're getting keep keep, keep, <laughs> keep keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of share, and this is so so helpful. Everything you 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 mentioned, share a little bit, Rick, if you would, about uh, the the cameras and whether they're they're helpful or not for people to kind of have have cameras and the connection there. In lieu of having an active block, you're block talking watch. about the house cameras. Uh, yeah, in lieu of having an active block watch, are are the cameras sometimes a remedy or or an alternative? <laughs> It really depends how they're used. I know when it's sort of like when Ring first came about before it was brought out by Amazon, their concept was to have all the Ring cameras actually connected to the police department so they can, they can you know, see and, and when, you know, the, the, the Ring person having the camera can relay their, their, their film or their digital um, images to the police departments. I don't, I don't think that took, that, that took, off. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon bought it and, you know, they have both ring and blink uh, cameras. I don't know why they just don't settle on one. Uh, but so it helps, but it helps the individual. But, mm -hmm. you know, the thing is, is that if I'm not home and my camera goes off, uh, all I can do is, you know, some of them I can yell at the person, um, but, you know, I can call the police. But by the time the response of the mm -hmm. response, they're long gone. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I can I can put the uh, the uh, digital image in the cloud. I can give it to them. If they're wearing a mask, it's not going to help them. Out. They're not going to help mm -hmm. them. So it's a it's a it's a good deterrent for those who want to be deterred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by, by implication, some some folks are not really deterred, but. Or, well, or if, I'm, if I if I if I know if you have a ring camera, I have a mask on. You're not going to be able to see who I am if I if I do it at not well. They they do work very well at night. But if I you know if I do it and uh, you know I'm snatching a package off off the porch. Yeah, the, yeah, the porch thieves, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Porch, you know, they're you know the cops can't not going to get me. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time that they respond, I'm going to be long gone. So they criminals adapt. Indeed. I mean, very, they're very good at adapting, and we have to, um, as a community, adapt to what mm. they're doing. Mm, um, good point. Good point. Uh, and good that, point. that that that's the thing. It, you know, if is there a way that we can have our packages delivered to a, um, to a place where that's secure that we can go pick it up? You know, we have to adapt so that the porch pirates are not, you know, cannot do what they do by mm -hmm. just probably up jumping out and just grabbing grabbing packages. Right. You know, but, can they be delivered? Yeah. You know, can we have a Build a place where they say, okay, this is secure. You can pick up your package between the hours of whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, you know, six days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where yeah. can that be? I mean, I, I'm just throwing that out there, but right. that mm -hmm. would be that would be a way. So yeah, have my package delivered to such and such Willie Avenue. The, you know, that's where all the packages are delivered to. And uh, you can come pick them up. Well, Again, I, that, I, that, I, that will take I have, care of I, I have my packages, as you know, on my porch, because I know that you can see them because <laughs> 
<laughs> that's why I've been I've been relied upon yeah. you. So you well, continue. It's you true. Continue yeah, I can. That. That's absolutely right. I can you yeah, continue I can. to do that. I've, I've retained you and been paying you those big bucks <laughs> for that private security service. Let's jump a little second uh, for a second to the Southern. Uh, and I'm not picking on students that are going to be on college campuses for the first time. But actually, next month, August. Uh, and I think people don't really appreciate the need for campus security. What are some of the things that you want to say? You would want to say to a student that's going to be entering uh, a campus anywhere in the, the world, for that matter. You know about their safety, about their public responsibility. I think people under, underestimate the the need um, for for folks like you. And you, as you say, you were at Southern for I think you said ten years. Was it? It's. It's, yeah, yeah. Good to yeah. Point. So what are some advice you, you'd like to give a student uh, when they enter the, this campus environment in terms of staying safe and healthy and, and not being subject well, to criminality? Well, it's some of the same things you tell you get, you, you tell <laughs> you tell the general public. Uh, staying safe, you know, tra tra you know, travel in numbers. And we know you're gonna we know you're gonna travel. You know you're gonna go downtown, but do it in numbers. Uh, the other the other thing is 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 you know drinking is was it. Is is a big part of what you what they're going to do, mm -hmm. um, and you know it's sort of like I always tell freshmen if you can make it through your freshman year without without you know getting thrown out because you were you know drunk party too hardy, uh, then you've learned how to you know to navigate that part of 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 the 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 education experience. Mm -hmm. And every every freshman has to do it. And Leon, there are some that mm -hmm. never have to do it because I, I I don't drink, I don't do this, I don't you know I don't do that, and mm -hmm. they're fine. But there's a good portion of them, like maybe sixty five percent, that mm -hmm. are going to go through that. Out mm -hmm. of that sixty five percent, probably a good ten percent of that sixty five percent will flunk out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know you try to you know you know the university has ways to sort of try to capture them and, and put them on the right path. But again, a percentage of them are, are you know, like I, you know, I, I use the bell curve. A percentage of them are not going to make it. Mm. Our job is to protect them again as a guardian, protect them from themselves. Okay, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're drinking. You know, we, you know, we're going to send you to the hospital in order for you to come back to campus. You have to, you know, these these are the things you have to do. You have to, you know, meet the uh, the discipline officer um, and do all these things. You're going to have to go to counseling, and hopefully, um, you get to save some of them. You know, mm. you get to bubble and you get to save some of them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that you know, policing on a police on on a, on a campus is slightly different than policing, you know, in the in in the in the real community. Yeah. Um, because you have other other tools that you can use. I mean, you have uh, tools that the campus it, that the campus offers that that you can use that you can divert students to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make you know that disorderly arrest right away because you have the tool to say, look. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna be on, on notice that you, you know, if you screw up again, you're out. Mm. Um, so you have other tools to use, and a lot of times when you come from the outside community to a campus as a, as a police officer, you sort of have to get out of that mindset that I'm sending everybody to court. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta arrest everybody. <laughs> uh, you don't. You don't have to arrest everybody. Here are the tools that are at your disposal. Use them. Um, yeah. And the community needs to know that because if they have a problem. Um, you can contact the campus police and they can sort of go out and say, okay, I see, I see the problem. And they can use the school's tools to yes. rank those, those kids in. I know because kids live off campus and a lot of times they cause a ruckus in the community. Mm -hmm. what, what do we do about it? They call the regular police. Oh, we're going to, you know, you know, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Um, they can be actually pulled in, 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 in inside the campus. Uh, good. That's a good point. Network mm -hmm. and, you know, be controlled that way. You know, mm -hmm. you get another call from you, you know, you're out or, you know, going to suspend you or we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And again, they're the, the, hopefully they are there for an education. Those kids who are there to party are going to party no matter what. And, you know, the only thing that you can do is, you know, sort of get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But those kids that are there ultimately to get an education will, you know, they'll conform. Excellent. But that's, you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were involved with internal affairs, correct? Uh, twice, yes, in and both departments. <laughs> so, so talk, talk, talk about that the the need for that. And and again, I'm not trying to blackball or whiteball or I mean, we're it's all a, human. We're all human in, from the fun, from the fundamental analysis. What's the the need for internal affairs? The need for internal it's 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 very interesting because it, it's you know people just say well it used to get the back cops off the road. I always thought of it as a little bit more than that. 
Um, yes, good cops will make will make a mistake. And but bad cops, it's not a mistake. And you have to be able to distinguish between between the mm. good cop and the bad cop. Um, and you know, also um, when I left, when I was there in New Haven, I had a database. And my database consisted of the type of complaints that I was I was getting. And some of the complaints. I couldn't do anything about, but there were complaints. So what do you do with those? So what I used to do, I used to get, you know, complaints that, you know, that I don't like the way how the you know, cops were talking to me. Well, did they swear at you? No, but you know, they were talking down to me. Um, what do you do with that type of complaint? It's not a, a complaint that I can take and take the kid and say, stop talking that way. Mm -hmm. What I used to do is, is collect those type of complaints and go to training. Mm. So we got these, we got these, these type of complaints. I can't do anything with them. But we need to begin to train our officers um, to be better aware, cognizant of what they're doing when they're talking to people, or they be better aware of what they're doing when they're approaching uh, these these people in, in these neighborhoods. And we need to begin. It's your job as trainers to begin to train to that, mm -hmm. uh, to begin to educate them to that. Mm -hmm. My job at that point was that I'm gathering these things uh, because of the database, and I can show them. I can show you quantitatively what's going on and, and, you know, that some officers, I can show you that they're just bad officers and we can deal with that. But some of it is just passed down from officer to officer. Oh, you know, you don't have to worry about them. They, you know, just, you know, they, they don't care. Um, which is also a bad attitude problem because a lot of officers believe that their badge, you know, gives them a, you know, it's a cure all. I don't, you know, I have, I have this, I have my badge mm -hmm. uh, and then I don't need a, I don't need to have a, uh, a, a, a relationship with the community. And if you have that attitude that I have my badge and I don't need a relationship, then your relationship to the community is bad. Mm. Mm. No matter what you think, you have a relationship with the community. And if you think you don't have one, then I can tell you right off the bat, your relationship is bad. Mm -hmm. um, internal affairs is necessary for that, to get those, those bad apples off the street or get those bad apples re-educated. Re mm. if, if they're bad apples, you want to get them off the street. Um, you, you know, you can you can name the few as you say. Uh, uh, what you call what you call Billy? <laughs> well, let, let's shift to that for a second, and it, we're not going to uh, yeah. re, re, rebury or recastigate or or rebrand but, people that are now in the grave. But there was that episode in New Haven for unfortunately more than one year, and there are unfortunately still descendants of those family members that were kind of uh, caught up in, in 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 some malfeasance with other with, with the police. And, and so that there's that res, there is somewhat of that residue still in the community. And in the, and how, the, it's very, again, you have to go back to that, that community uh, government, community government policing, community government. If you think about, say, the late 90s, what we were doing, all the programs that we had for kids, all the program that we had for after school programs, um, all those things. We took care of a lot of the kids, um, junior high school, grade school at that point. And a lot of those kids became very successful. Mm -hmm. What we did not concentrate on, on were the kids that were not in that age group, the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds, the infants that were born. When they became of age, five or six, there were no programs for them. There was nothing. We weren't getting any federal money. We stopped it. Those... A lot of those kids were kids from incarcerated people. Mm -hmm. Okay. We didn't do anything to try to keep those kids at that time because they were so young out of the system that they were, that they were primed to go into mm. once they came of age. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. Just for a second. Mom, I'm, uh, I, can I call you back? Yes, let me call you back. Okay. Bye. -bye. Um. And what happens? We never, we didn't, we didn't have any, anything for those those kids that were coming up after all our programs ended. And where do they go? They continued in the family business. They continued in the family business. We didn't. We weren't able to extrapolate them from it to say there's a better way. Mm -hmm. And so. The, there was no better way and they went the way of that 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 was provided for them 
and we didn't we 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 were very very bad of of, of giving them a choice. Um, mm. I, I I I you know again, we have to do better of saying that this is only as long as we get money from the federal government or for whatever program fighting back or whatever program that that was giving mm-hmm. us money at the time. Mm-hmm. We have to say we want to incorporate this program because it's going to be better for us as a community or as a society um, in the long run. Yeah, um, not be so short-sighted about it. Rick, we have about ten minutes. Let's let's just kind of wrap up. And as perhaps there's something we discussed in these last forty or fifty minutes that has sparked your memory or caused you to want to elaborate on, um, I, I'm tempted to ask about your your rehabilitation, and only in the sense that. Um, Life sometimes it gets throw throw tricks, <laughs> throw, throw tricks, tricks, yeah. tricks and tricks and curveballs. And how do you respond and and uh, rehabilitate yourself and still say still say optimistic uh, in terms of the the fragility of just this existence? And uh, as you know, I just celebrated a, a birthday yesterday, and certainly in a, I'm very much into a, a, a reflect, reflective mode in that regard. Um, it's uh, go ahead, please. It's 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 interesting. Um, some of the ways it's really interesting, a, a police officer, a, a colleague of that I had at Southern, um, just just made sergeant. He, he, you know, he went to an, an, another state agency and he made sergeant. He called me up and he and he and he said, you know, Rick, 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 I, I, I'm a sergeant now. And I said, congratulations. Those are the things that that sort of keep me going. Hmm. Um, I, you know, when you, when some people call you or you get together and they, you know, they tell you that you, you touch them in a way to keep them, um, focused on what, you know, what, the, what I, you know, what, you know, what I thought was right and it helped them. Um, those are the things that, that keep me going. I, I sure like your radio show. When you hear from people, those are the things that keep yes. me going, but those are the things that keep me going. Uh, keeping in touch with 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 the, the, some of the people that are, you know, like again, they're they're still in the industry. They're still they're still they're still out there in the street. Um, keeping in touch with them and seeing you know just seeing you know how well they're doing, um, and sometimes giving them advice. Saying, I'll get called and say, I got I got I got this problem. Yeah. Uh, and you know can, you know can you help me with it? And 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 if I can, I say certainly I will help you with your you know I I will I will help you with that problem. Um, so that that, that sort of keeps me going. Um, you know, I, I, you know, at just, some point, just as a personal note for our, for our, our listeners, uh, Rick is going through a rehab and, <laughs> and, and, and my, my wife has mentioned that she, and I'll, I'm going to put you on blast and she, she caught you at a funeral that you should not, I'm not sure your doctor, <laughs> I'm not sure your doctor would have approved of your going, but that was, I guess, another example of your oh, yeah, uh, do you, oh, commitment. He, well, he, he was, a, he was actually a, uh, a mentor of mine, uh, uh, Marshall Gambrell. I mean, he, you know, he was uh, from the time I was a rookie cop on. I, you know, he, he uh, trained me. You know, got me in in, in the right mindset um, as a New Haven cop. And then he went to Southern. And when I came to Southern, he got me in the right mindset of how <laughs> Southern, <laughs> how you know how Southern was different. Um, in 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 how to look at Southern is different and then looking at police work. So I was well prepared when I when I when I made that transition because because of Marshall Gambrell. I sort of in my time there at Southern, I've had a few New Haven police officers come in and I pass that sort of knowledge along. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's the other thing about police work. When you have a a, a good mentor, it is your job um, to pass to pass it along. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, officer, well, you know, sergeant, whatever he ended up being when he left, lieutenant, uh, Reddish. I had him as a rookie officer, and when he now he's you know, head of school security, and I I would go to security officers. And I said, "How's he treating you?" Oh, he's good. He's good. He's good. I said, "Okay," because I look at him I, and I look at Reddish. I says, "Because he knows how he was and how I had to <laughs> <laughs> and how I had to sort of sit him down." And he, he looked. He said he had to sit me down and yell at me and whatever, but to put him on the right path. Um, and that's that's what you, that's what you have to do. As we conclude, as we conclude, let's kind of just continue on that thought about young folks that might want to enter the the uh, protective services, be <laughs> fire or police, and and we're, we're blessed. I'll use that term not loosely, but to, to know that even one of our the sons of one of our neighbors has now entered into the entered the force. Yes, uh, Chris. <laughs> what, 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 what would you say to some folks, uh, young people that are thinking about a career? 
because we know about the, sh the national shortage in, in this regard. What would you say, not, not necessarily as an encouragement, but just in terms of information for them to, to strongly consider that this is a, it's a, it could be a career, a passion, a, a, it a, is, call, a calling. It, it is, it is a career. Um, and one that I, you know, if you looked at me when I was younger, that I thought I was going to be into no way in hell. But what I, what I would tell them is that, you know, it's a, a, keep an open mind. You're not going to be able to change the world. You know, you know, a lot of, a lot of young cops going, oh, I'm going to, you know, you're not uh, understand that, but you can make a difference mm. in people's lives in an individual's lives. And if you can make an, a, a difference in an individual's life, one or two or three a year, then you are definitely doing a, you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And that's what you should do. I should be able to make a difference in, 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 in people's lives, a good difference. Um, and if you keep that in mind, then that will help you in your decision making. Mm -hmm. Because you want to, you know, you again, you you sometimes have to guard people against themselves, and that's not a bad thing. Um, but you you know, we understand that they're not they're not the enemy. The mm -hmm. public is not the enemy, um, and they could be they can they can help you if you allow them to. Mm -hmm. If you allow if you if you let them in, if you're willing to let them in and not keep them at bay, they can help you. They will help you. They want to help you, um, but you have to give them the opportunity to do so. And that's the one thing I did learn as, as a district manager in Dwight, that the, that the community will help you mm -hmm. if you allow them to do so. Excellent. I think, well, that's, we can, we can, we can conclude on, on that note. I, I, I might say I might want to uh, offer or, or invite us to kind of do it again, maybe this fall, but I think we can conclude uh, on that note, that, that, that harmony that you just mentioned. We're, we're in this together and let, let's, let, let's win it together. Let's win it together. Thanks so much, man. Not, not a problem. I, finally, <laughs> we finally got it done. We, we got it. We got it done. That's what perseverance is all about. Perseverance and commitment. And uh, and I'll uh, I'll see you soon. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm sure. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, all right. man. Talk to you later.